Good morning. Today is Friday, November the 3rd. The time right now is 6.48 in the morning. I am rushing to the airport shortly after this uh, recording. And uh, overnight, we have quite a bit of a robust move in equity market. We see equity markets largely has risen uh, since the FOMC meeting in which most people were thinking that the Fed is done hiking. And this is the reason behind the optimism in equity market. You can see in the Dow, uh, overnight, we see a rise to 33,852.9, which is a one7 percent rise in uh, in overnight rates we can see currently where the market is is it's going to be crucial because we are near a swing high at 34,147.6 now this level should not be taken out if you're going to maintain a bearish outlook and this of course will be a basis uh, the non-farm payroll numbers that we're going to see tonight. Uh, market expect the, the new jobs created to be 180,000 jobs. If this number is lower than market expected, we could see a unraveling of this uh, rally that we see so far this week. However, a stronger than uh, than 180,000 jobs will see this market actually fly uh, beyond 34,147.6, perhaps to 34,571.8 to 34,800. Uh, 776.3. So there are two possibilities here, depending on the outcome of the new jobs created. Unemployment rate is expected to stay stable at 3.8%. So there's probably no surprise there, but do look out for a spike in volatility going forward. And over in the S&P 500 market, actually rallied 1.9% uh, to 4,319.7. And this is again, one of the highest move uh, the most aggressive mode in a single day uh, since April 27. We can see that this is actually on the back of very pessimistic outlook going into the week itself. The VIX was actually very, very high going into the week itself because of the rising tension in the Middle East and the, basically all the outlook uh, for the US market has been less than ideal. So we can see a change in fortune this week and let's see if we can continue to extend higher. The level to watch in the S&P 500 will be 4,393.6. And like I say, this is the equivalent of the Dow Jones uh, swing high. If this swing high is taken out, this market would have a change of character. We need to say that there's a good chance it will actually challenge the 4,500 levels at some point in time. So do watch out for uh, increase in volatility. Uh, over in Asia, we can see overnight, the Nikkei has actually risen very strongly to 32,350. On the back uh, that the Bank of Japan is probably looking to tweet uh, its yield curve control. So that gives market some kind of optimism, whether it is warranted or not remains to be seen. Uh, the level to watch will be 32,660 in the futures market. And this, uh, this is a swing high, should not be taken out. If it does take out, then of course it will change everything uh, as far as the bearish outlook is concerned. So the level to watch will be, in my opinion, 32,290 to 32,520 in the futures contract. So do watch out for some kind of pullback. If you do see a pullback, uh, I, I think it will be reasonable to expect a 50% pullback. Uh, that will be 31,600 to somewhere 31,370 if you extend it to 61.8% retracement. Over in Hong Kong, we can see Hong Kong market did not look quite rarely, but uh, it is maintaining a somewhat firmer outlook. Uh, the market is likely to extend higher uh, this morning basis, uh, the overnight Wall Street gains. So the level to watch will be 17,562 to 17,611. Uh, that will mean that the market has uh, do a three-wave uh, equality uh, rally into this breakout of prices. Again, we want to watch uh, anywhere between uh, 17,600 to 17,760, I would say. Okay, so again, this, these levels are the level to watch out for today. And over in the dollar, we can see dollar has actually pulled back rather sharply. Of course, this is also on the belief that the Fed is done hiking. So this is taking the floor away from the dollar. But the dollar index actually was a high, uh, traded to a high of 107.11 the day before. Uh, so the market has tanked quite a fair bit to 105.812. And this is momentarily at one stage actually broke a support line, but on a close to close basis, we have not broken this line. So we would need to see a close below this line to actually, uh, to confirm that the, the dollar probably have picked and we should be trading to the downside on every bounce. Over in the uh, Euro dollars, we can see Euro dollars actually managed to uh, trade to a high. Let me see where this level is right now. 
and uh, did not quite take out the day before high at 106.67 uh, before it come back down to 106.19 uh, there about. So we can see that there was a very, very sharp rally in the euro dollars. Euro dollar basically has already broken out of a resistant line. So any, any pullback should be seen as a buying opportunity, at least for the short term. Over in sterling, we also see a ready attempt there was a larger degree three wave earlier on i did mention a, a smaller degree three wave which actually ended uh at this level at 122 okay so we have another pullback to retest this, the demand area at uh, 121 and the market actually held and we saw another rally attempt overnight to as high as uh, 122 26 and did not quite get into this bracket, but it's almost equality for the second larger degree three wave rebound. So we have to watch how this market behave uh, going forward. Does it want to come down? Does it want to go up? But at any rate, we want to see uh, how the market reacts at 122.89, okay? Over in the Aussie, Aussie had a three wave equality move very nicely, go to 0 0.6456, uh, which is well within this bracket of prices uh, for equality rebound. So we want to see again how the market reacts. We have already have a minor break in a uh, uh, of a swing high 0 0.6445. Again, we want to see uh, whether the market will take out 0 0.65, which is going to be a mountain to climb. Okay. Over in dollar yen, we see a bit of a pullback in dollar yen without the Bank of Japan intervening in the market. The high traded uh, this week is 151.71, and overnight we have a break of 150 to as low as 149.84 before the market now is currently trading just above the one. 50 mark at 150.45 as we are speaking. So by and large, I do expect prices to continue to edge higher into 150.80 to 151 even before we see a reaction. Ideally, we should see a three wave uh, retargeting the low that we saw uh, at the start of the week at 148.80. Okay. And uh, as far as the Canadian dollar is concerned, let me see where the Canadian dollar is. Canadian dollars actually saw a pullback from a high of just under 139 and currently is trading at 137.35. And this is actually a level that is actually telling us that there's a good chance that we may have already seen the peak in the dollar because we are seeing the same thing happening in the dollar index. So this is a very good indication that we have actually broken the support line here from the low that we see uh, at the start of the week, uh, at the start of uh, last week. So we can see prices is probably heading lower. Uh, the target right now to look for will be 136.20 to 135.70, okay? And uh, in precious metals, nothing had really happened. Uh, gold managed to hold on very, very well and are currently trading at 1,985 dollars and 10 cents with a low at 1,969 dollars and 90 cents. So over, over time, I think the market may grind a little bit lower uh, because the sentiment has changed somewhat. And uh, this should actually cause gold prices to rally because the dollar is actually on the back foot right now. So if we do see a pullback uh, into $1,955, that will be a buy area for me. And uh, I want to see that happen because I'm actually hoping that it will come to this area for me to anchor in a buy. Okay, because the Middle East tension is unlikely to uh, de-escalate over the weekend. I think it's going to for anything is going to escalate, okay? So that should be supportive of precious metal prices. And over in silver, we also see the same thing. The market is basically trading water right now. Uh, currently trading at $22.72 in the cash market. The most recent low here is $22.43, which is well within the bracket of prices of known demand. The area is $22.36 to $22.50. So if the market ever dip here, it could be a buying opportunity, okay? And over in oil, you can see oil prices also uh, pull back to $80.19. It managed to go into this bracket of prices of previous known demand. The area is $79.31 to $80.80, and that caused the market to rally. Uh, to oh, I won't say rally, I would say yeah, rebound to $82.57. So over time, I think there's a good chance the market may uh, may firm up from here. Although I would love to see this market dip a little bit lower, below $80. Uh, anywhere between $76 and $0.31 cents onwards to the downside, I think would be good to buy. Uh, ideally, to me, uh, that area is $72.64 $72 to $74.10, okay? 
And over in Bitcoin, Bitcoin actually managed a new high for the year at uh, just under 36,000 to 35,951 before it pulls back to currently just under 35,000. So prices could actually come back a little bit more to test the 33,550 level to 32,555 level. If the market do come into this bracket of prices of about $1,000 range, that could be a buying area in my opinion. The top side potential in my opinion, again, is about somewhere in uh, in the mid 37,000 to as high as 40,000 for this round before we see a significant pullback. So this is my two cents worth and I wish you guys a great weekend ahead and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.